I'm back again and my previous video went over how to make the head for um, the Simplicity Memory Bear and now we're going to be starting at so we've, we've made the head and we're going to be starting at step six um, which is going to be to stitch together the front of the body um, I have everything cut out so here's my front body piece and I'm going to just um, stitch, I have right sides together, and I'm going to stitch down along the side with the double notches. Um, so we'll go over to the sewing machine and we'll stitch it. Okay, so I have stitched this body front together, it's upside down, um, at the center seam and clipped a couple of notches into the seam so that it lays flat when we finally get around to stuffing it. So you'll see we have the, the belly part all stitched together. Okay, so we're going to set that aside for now. And the next step is actually to do the legs. So I have the legs here, and they're pinned together. And what I've done here is there's, um, there's three different sets of notches, I guess you could call them. One is at the bottom of the foot for attaching to the sole and this is probably the most important notch that you'll need because it really helps to align the sole and the sole is uh, like an oval shape and it's quite difficult to get pinned correctly if you don't have this um, notch for for positioning. The other the other notch that exists is this one in front it's I think just to line up the two pieces so it's no big deal and then there should be and, I, and you'll see I didn't cut them here. There should be a notch approximately where each of these pins are. And um, on the pattern, you do not sew between these two pins or two notches. You just sew this edge and this edge, okay? And you leave this open because this will be the stuffing hole. Um, so you stuff through here and then you'll hand sew that up. It's really important to make sure you leave this hole open. Um, I've forgotten many times and then you have to rip out a portion of your stitches so that you have a hole to stuff the legs through. I don't, what I've found is I don't like to cut the notches here. And the reason for that is that when you, when you cut the notches and you sew right to the notch but not beyond it, and then when you're trying to, you know, turn this little edge inward to sew it together at the very, very end, it gets very difficult to turn it where the notch is cut. Yeah, you end up having to really shove the fabric under and it just is, is kind of a pain. So instead, what I do is I put pins in and these are about two and a half to three inches apart. Um, you can measure it on the pattern or you can just sort of eyeball it. The less, uh, you know, you, you can make this hole smaller but it's gonna get really difficult to stuff. So it's gotta be a good trade-off between ease of stuffing the legs and uh, the time it takes to hand sew. So what I'm going to do is go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to make a you know a stitch a seam here, leaving the top open. Stitch a seam here, leaving the bottom open, and then stitch along the curved side of the leg. And I'm going to do that for both of these legs. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and do that, and then I'll show you my results. So I've stitched the legs together. And um, I, I actually have a kind of a darker pink yarn or thread so you can see the stitching. So I stitch a quarter inch along the curve and I usually leave just a little bit of, um, of space unstitched uh, between a, an eighth inch and a quarter inch so that there's just a little bit of play here. I find it much easier to pin the sole if you have just a little bit of leeway and you don't sew right off the edge. Um, this one I didn't I didn't leave quite as much, more like an eighth of an inch over here. And then you can see I left that, um, what's going to be the, the hole for stuffing the leg. Um, and I did the same thing on the second one. So it's um, pretty important, again, to make sure you have a quarter inch seam at the very bottom of the leg because it's going to affect how the soles, these are the soles of the feet, fit into this opening. So I'm going to show you how I do the pinning for one of these feet. 
and then we will sew it and I'll show you how I sew it. So um, for this we want to do right sides together so you're going to keep this inside out and you're going to put so, put this so that the right side is like inside the bottom of the leg so it's going to be right sides together like this. Um, to get it lined up I fold this in half so that the notches match up and then I, I kind of pinch pinch the end so that I know I'm right in the middle and then I take the uh, leg part and I'm going to match my little pinched folded edge up to the very toe. So I'm going to squeeze that in there and then open it up a little bit and pin this into here. And I like to have my points face out, points of the pins face out. And I'm going to pin the other side as well. And then I do the same thing with the other side. So the reason I choose to do this um, match up the ends first rather than the notches is because it's very difficult to fold the piece in half when you have the notches pinned, but it's it's not hard to find the notches after you've already done the ends. So I have that pinched and then I'm going to match it up with the seam. And just pin this down. As I said with the curved headpiece, I sometimes need to pin and repin the feet several times before it works. Uh, there can be a lot of fudging and kind of moving things around with this. Okay, so now I have the two ends pinned. Now I'm going to take the notches and match the notches up and pin them at the notches. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you have four points that you know are supposed to be matched up, and you've sewn it with the proper seam allowance, it can be very easy to kind of fill in the other places with pins. So I'm matching up the other side. And now the, you can see the foot kind of just fits. If we look on this side, you know, there's not a lot hanging over. So now I'm going to pin in between, and I would recommend quite a few pins in this step. This is um, pretty critical to getting this to go right. And a lot of times, what happens is there, um, if you, if you, if they don't quite match up, you're going to get um, wrinkling and folding of the fabric, and so you can get kind of a funny look um, at the feet after it's sewn together. So I, I just pin, use so many pins in the feet because it's, it's better for me to put the time in up front pinning it than it is to either have a finished product with a, with a wrinkle in it or to um, rip the stitches out and try again. So let me just show you here. You can see that between my fold and toe, or heel I guess, and the notch, it just all has matched up nicely because I was able to match the four, um, the four compass points, for lack of a better word. And you can see how many pins I've already put in and I'm not even done. So. Yeah, I just recommend a lot of pinning for the feet. It just goes so much easier if you just use tons of pins and keep everything in place. And then you don't get that wrinkling because everything is just held in place so well that, that there's no extra fabric to uh, kind of bunch up and wrinkle. If you do, I have had a couple of times where my foot piece doesn't quite match up to my leg piece because I've I've had you know I've sewn the seam allowance a little bit differently or um, the, the foot was cut out a little bit off and usually what I do then is I'll actually let the foot part 
overhang so there so you'd have fabric sticking up up the back foot would be there the leg part would be here and the foot part would be sticking up so that at least you're not getting wrinkling of the fabric you can have the foot be a little you know you don't have to have the full foot fabric used but it'll look funny if you don't use all of the leg fabric you'll get wrinkling and, and folding so I'm going to show you how I stitch this because this is a fully curved piece and it is a little bit difficult to stitch and there are a lot of pins to go around so we will start here I usually start at the back of the foot or toward the back of the foot and again this is an area where you want to try to get the seam to lay flat if it doesn't it's not too big a deal but it's nicest if you can get it to uh, lay flat so I'm going to start here again quarter inch seam and you want to be very sure that you're not sewing the leg into this see how this is all kind of bunched up under here just want to make sure that it's not bunched under your presser foot and your needle so you can ha you kind of have to um, readjust often to make sure that you're not catching that in your stitching um, so I'm just I just keep going a little bit and I can take a few of these pins out as I go and then I readjust the leg so I have the, it's hard to see, but I have the leg fabric back here and I'm just keeping it out of the way. So I'm just pushing it backwards each time I readjust. Just keep going around the curve at a quarter inch. And there's no need to rush this. If you do have trouble going around the curves, it may be easier to stop and uh, lift up your presser foot and move your fabric under the, with the needle down. Um, there's, there's no problem with doing that. I mean, you can stop and move it as many times as you need to. Just gonna remove a few more of these pins. Quite a few pins here. So we're getting to another seam. So I'm gonna push it open with my fingers and try and get it to lay flat. Like I said, it doesn't lay perfectly flat. It's not a big deal, but it's just nicer to have it lay flat in the first place. So here I'm gonna lift my presser foot and just move this under the needle a little bit better. And I'm gonna move this fabric under and out of the way of the needle so that I'm not catching any of the leg fabric in my seam. Adjusting continuously, pushing that leg, that leg fabric back. And here's where we started. You can see that seam is sewn flat there. So I'm back around to the beginning. And you want that seam to meet up nicely where you started. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and created this, the bottom of the foot. So I will show you what this looks like. Take the rest of my pins out. And I am going to, um, I'm going to clip this, but I'll show you what it looks like first and then I'll go back and clip it. But I, I clip all the way around this circle so that it's nice and flat when we turn it inside out. So generally, um, I turn everything by the stuffing holes. So they, they seem to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to turn this inside out, pull it through both ends. So we have the leg and then the foot. And you can just press this out with your fingers or you can use a tool like a plastic knitting needle 
or a bone folder. Um, any kind of blunt, smooth object works. So you can now see the finished foot and you can see how the stitching is smooth all the way around. There's no wrinkles, there's no you know, folded areas um, in the seam um, because we have you know, successfully pinned everything and kept everything in place while we were stitching it. So here is the leg and foot and this will get sewn to the body front. So um, I'm going to set this aside and do the other foot as well as um, clipping the inside seam of this. And uh, then we can move on to stitching these to the body front. I finished stitching the second foot. So we have two nice oval soles all stitched up. And I've, I've clipped the um, seams, clip curves, and now I'm going to get ready to sew them to the body front. So the first step in doing this is to take the top of the leg and match these two seams, wrong sides together, so you want to push the seams out so they're nice and flat, so you have this, this sort of sandwich. And I generally pin a couple times here just to keep everything in place, and what we're going to do is baste this in place so that um, so that we can attach it to the leg without anything moving. So we're going to pin this open. Like that. We're going to match these edges and baste. So what I do to baste, again, is to set my machine stitch to the maximum that it can go. And I'm just going to stitch across with no back stitching um, all the way off the end. The other thing I do is I, I do the basting at about an eighth of an inch from the edge or seam allowance um, instead of a quarter inch so that when we sew the quarter inch it'll be beyond the basting and then you won't see it if you choose not to take it out like I usually choose. So this goes very quickly with such a large stitch. And we have a nice basted seam. So I'm going to take these pins out. And I've basted it up. I will baste the second one and then show you how to attach the two legs to the body front. I have basted the two legs. So now we have two legs that are all basted up about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And we have our body front here. And I'm going to attach the legs to the body front. So if you can imagine the bear sitting up here, um, you're going to want the legs to stick out like this so the toe is up. So what we're going to have to do is, is put the, the toe part against this so that it's going to lay properly. So we're going to put the toe down so we can see the stuffing hole on the leg and back. Then we're going to attach it to the bottom edge, the more curved edge, so you can see up here is, is the shorter, the smaller and shorter neck part. And this is going to be the bottom of the bear. So we're going to attach the leg to here. So here's one place where if you do mark uh, your patterns. Um, this is the body front uh, piece and it has this little circle down here. So when you cut this out, some people will mark that circle with um, either Taylor's chalk or disappearing ink or just uh, washable ink if you're going to be washing the bear. I, in this case, I don't, I'm not sure how you would do that, maybe before you stuff it. Anyway, there are these little circles and this corresponds if you look at this, it's just perfectly the right size to fit between these two dots, like this. So I usually don't mark it, I just take the pattern after the fact and lay it on, uh, lay it on my piece, finished piece, accounting for the, the seam allowance here. So I put the seam allowance at the seam line and then um, then I, I kind of just mark it with my finger. So I'm 
going to put the edge here and pin it. And then just follow along along the curve, matching this up and pinning it down. So that's pretty close. You can see it's maybe three quarters of an inch uh, away from the seam line, just like this dot here is about three quarters of an inch from the seam line. Um, then I only do that for one side and then I stitch it down. Then for the, I'm sorry, for the other side, what I do is I, I just fold it in half and I just match it. Because in my opinion, it's more important to um, just have the two sides matching than it is to try and match the pattern exactly. And now I have this piece stitched to my body front and you can see if I turn it right side up you can see that if the bear was sitting we'd have the toe up and that's the bear belly. So um, like I said to do the other one what I'm going to do is just fold this in half can get it folded here. Fold this in half and mark with my finger where this leg was attached and then I just attach it here and pin it up. So then you know when you if you, you fold it back up and check it you know, the two legs are going to be pretty much even with respect to the center seam line. And that's just, you know, it, it looks nicer because everything is uh, nice and line, lined up and, and symmetrical from side to side. So I put a couple of pins in here and again I'm going to stitch this on with a quarter inch seam to be a little bit beyond my basting line. After this I will show you how to sew the back and then put the whole body together. I have now stitched my legs to my body section and I just want to lay this down and back up a little bit so you can see what it looks like. Oops, sorry. So you can see the legs and the feet are toes up, the little toes here, attached to the body front. So that's gonna, you know, we attached it with the front sides together like this. So that both legs were, were up when we stitched them and um, we're going to set that aside um, and we're going to work on the body back. So this is the body back pieces. So the first thing that we're going to do for the body back is to make the dart seams. So these are going to make the bum of the bear this little um, Pac-Man looking thing. So we're going to take this and put put the right sides together and it matches nicely. It's a little, little um, V cut out of here. I'm going to put that together. I generally just put one pin so that it, you know, you have a, something to hold it together and then just squeeze it together and use a quarter inch seam to sew that. And that I'm going to do in each of the two um, parts and then we will sew them together. So you can see the dart seam that I have sewn. Here's how it looked before and then I sewed across a quarter inch seam and here's how it looks so that it makes you know something for the bear to sit on. Um, it just makes it sit a little nicer um, and I did that in in both of these pieces. So here's the other dart seam. Now what I'm going to do is put these two pieces together, right sides together, and match up the match up the two sides. Oh, got it backwards here. Match up the two sides. And what we're we're going to be sewing down the side that doesn't have the dart seams, the side again, you know, opposite from the dart seams. I'm just going to I'm just going to pin here a little bit. Here's another place where we're going to have the um, two notches, this is the back piece, body back, 
uh, pattern piece and you can see where these two notches were cut out. Again, this is another place where this is going to be a stuffing hole and you're not going to sew between these two notches. So I didn't cut the notches out as you can see here. What I'm going to do is sort of uh, half measure, half eyeball, you know, where I want this to be. So I'm going to just sort of you know, line this up a little bit and then put a pin here and then maybe you know this is now like three and a half to four inches away so I'm going to line line this up and around three and a half to four inches away I'm going to put another pin and these will be my my markers of where to stop so um, the other thing that I put in these bears is a little tag to show you know that, that a volunteer made this. So I'm going to add that at this point, and I want it to be um, on the back, but above the dart seam. So it's going to be right near the bottom of uh, the stitching hole or the stuffing hole rather. So I'm just going to put that between the two layers in the way that I want it. And you have to account for the fact that it's a quarter inch seam. So you, whatever part you want stitched needs to be approximately a quarter inch in. And then I'm going to sandwich it between the two layers. It's a little bit hard because my tag is straight sided and my bear is curved at this point and I'm going to pin that in so that it does not move out of place so I won't be able to see it when I'm stitching. So I have that pinned in and then I'm just going to put one more pin in the bottom of this. Okay, so I'm going to sew down this edge. Alright, so I have just clipped a few notches in the seam here and we are ready to attach the body back, which is here, to the body front, which is here with the legs. So what I'm going to do is take the body front, I'm going to fold the legs up toward the body, and then I'm going to take the body back and basically match it up. So starting at the top, we can match up the corners. And this is, this is going to be a, another pinning intensive uh, stage just because it's so big. So I'm going to match up both, both corners here. And then this will have notches if you've cut them um, in, in both the body front and body back that you can match up. This is where this not, these notches come in handy, you know, trying to match everything up. another couple pins. Make sure you don't catch the legs in your pins. It's going to keep on going down, pinning as I go. So at the legs you want to just make sure it's nice and flat so that you're, uh, you're not going to catch any of the legs in the stitching. And this seam you want to push out you can press it if you like. I usually don't press it. And then you're going to just pin through the whole thing. So there's a lot of layers of fabric at this point on your machine, uh, depending on how strong it is and, and what needle you have. Um, you may have trouble going through, especially if it's a heavier fabric. Uh, my machine should be able to handle this, even though it's four layers thick. I'm going to just make sure that when we get to the bottom, our two seams, center seams, are going to line up. If they don't line up, uh, you should probably go back and check your pinning, but we're going to open them and line them up like that and pin in place. And if they do line up, you know that you've, you've got a good match between front and back, that you've basically followed the seam allowance well all the way through so that everything is the same size the way that the pattern intends it. 
So I usually go from top down and then from top down on the other side. So I'm going to go back here, match up the notch, and pin everything up. When you're doing a memory bear, one of the hard, uh, harder things is that you never know what fabric you're going to get. So you could be working with a suiting material, you could be working with sweatshirt like this, you could be working with denim or flannel, I mean there's, there's whatever, whatever fabrics clothing comes in you might be working with. So some, some fabrics are definitely harder than others to get to, um, to pin and to sew. And there are different things you can do to deal with uh, different fabrics, but um, in general, I enjoy the challenge of uh, trying to make it work with whatever fabric I'm presented. Okay, so now I basically have this, um, the back and the front pinned together with the legs inside. And you want to make very sure that the legs are inside. You don't, you don't want to catch them in the seam. So I'm going to sew all the way around this. This is a pretty simple seam. Everything's pinned up. So all the way around, when I get to the, the leg part where there's a bunch, you know, a lot of layers, I'm just going to go slow and let my machine push through um, on its own. Then I will come back and show you what it looks like after we've sewn everything together. I've completed the seam around at a quarter inch. Uh, I wanted to mention quickly that at the very bottom where the legs are, I also increase the, se the seam allowance just a little bit, almost two, three eighths of an inch. And the reason for that is so that when you, if you look in this seam, we can see my basting line, the sewing line from, you know, sewing the legs to the body front, and then this seam line will be on, you know, on the inside of that. So you're not going to see this, these other stitches, either of these other stitches. Um, from the outside of the bear. So I have clipped the curves in the seam and I'm just going to um, pull everything um, right side out. You can do this through the neck hole or the or the stuffing hole. I'm just going to grab the little feet pull the whole thing inside out, right side out. So again, I will back up a little so that you can see. And we have the, the legs attached to the body. That's the front. This is the back. And you can see my little tag here that I sewed on. And we have the stuffing hole. So in the top, In the top here, this will be where we attach everything together. So in the next video, we'll make the arms and we'll put the arms on the sides here and then we will attach the head to the body at this point. So these notches will help us to line that up. Um, but this is the video that shows the completed body and hopefully you've uh, found this helpful and we will continue next time with the arms and then completing the entire bear.